I will tell you a story about a German missionary who, in his crusade against paganism, cut down sacred trees. But when do you think that happened? It happened in 2002, when the evangelist Reinhard Bonke had succeeded in procuring the ancient sacred site of the Yoruba polytheist religion in Nigeria, the Idita Oko Grove, which is sacred to the All Father God Obatala, in the holy town of Ile Ife, from where, according to Yoruba mythology, the world was created. The age old trees of this sacred grove were cut down, bulldozers cleared the space of remaining shrubs, and transformed the place into this huge evangelist revival meeting space of Bonkers Crusade. Loudspeakers, stages for Bonke to hold sermons and prayers and celebrate his eradication of paganism. And after having destroyed this sanctuary that had been there for time out of time, Reinhard Bonke moved on, spreading what evangelists called a message of love, of a religion that many adherents have the temerity to consider that it almost owns the concept of kindness and mercy. This video is about the cutting down of trees as a simple and literal attack on animist culture of land connectedness. Trees are extremely important symbols in Nordic animist traditions. There are staffs and trees in all kinds of ways. Uh, if Snorri's description is, is, is right, uh, then humans were created out of trees. Runes are staffs and they're possibly also associated with trees. In the English rune poem, several of the runes are named after trees. And of course, the cosmos itself, uh, in its coherence, is a tree. The roots of Yggdrasil reach to different parts of reality, one root goes to the Jotnar, the forces of chaos, who uh, interestingly holds the well of wisdom. One goes to the land of the dead, and one goes to the well of Urd, where the thing, the, the, uh, the parliament of the Aesir uh, congregate. The tree binds everything together. Uh, animals are, live in the branches, and the chaotic and the ordered sphere are also connected through the, through the tree. And in the Ragnarok, the tree burns, the ultimate image of collapsed connectedness as the cataclysm. Um, but uh, remember also that Yggdrasil is only one out of different um, uh, mythological trees. One important uh, is the Barnstocker, uh, around which Völsung's hall was built, and where Odin plunges a sword that will elect the king that can pull it out, a bit like King Arthur. Um, this importance of trees uh, is reflected in, in also in the ancient record. Tacitus remarks that groves played important, uh, an important role for the Germanic peoples. And indeed, the word uh, grove regularly appear in, in uh, uh, theophoric place names. Tors Lunde, you know, Thor's Grove, or Onsholt, Odin's Grove, and so on. Uh, the heathen temple in Uppsala had both a grove and a particularly sacred tree that was green all year round. Some speculate that it might have been a yew tree. With Christianity, this tree kinship became targeted, however. Laws prohibit the Saxons from worshipping trees, which they continued doing as late as the 11th century. And in the early 8th century, the Anglo-Saxon missionary Boniface cut down the Oak of Donna, Thor's Oak, in present-day Germany. Uh, Boniface then made a church out of the timber, very much like Reinhard Bonke in Nigeria, who made his horrid evangelist crusade on top of the bulldozed Idita Oko Grove. A bit later, in the 8th century, Charlemagne cut down a pillar-like thing called Irminsul might also have been a, a kind of a tree uh, during his crusade against the heathen Saxons. And on the Frösön, the Freys Island in northern Sweden, 
<clears throat> there is a stump of a birch tree that was found under the floor of a church with remains of animal bones, prob probably sacrifices, around it. They basically cut down the tree and, much like Bonke, just slammed the church on top. However, even considering this Christian aggression, which with quite precise intuition targets a centerpiece of, of uh, animist practice, the tree cult, there is still hope, actually. Because when you look at the ancient record, then you see that this practice, it seems fairly dynamic, fairly alive. Thorir Ketilsson, he arrives in Iceland and starts holding a grove of trees sacred in the spot where he builds his home. Probably something similar happened in Ireland, where the invading Nordics uh, probably made a Kale Tomer, a Thor's grove uh, near Dublin. And uh, I think this dynamic nature of tree cult and tree worship have contributed to make the tree worship a rather resilient part of animisms in Northern Europe. Also, if you go in and um, watch the Māori people in, 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 in Russia, who still have this very dynamic uh, pagan tradition, tree cult plays a central role. It basically, it basically looks like tree cult. And, but also in, in, in Western Europe, through folklore into the modern age, there's been sacred trees all over the place, basically. A single beech, which is standing in the middle of a forest, or elder trees, you know, in thorn trees, oak trees, ash, alder, linden, particularly yew, pretty much any kind of species of tree could be a sacred tree. There would be hollow trees or ancient trees, and there would be all kinds of weird old tales about these remarkable trees. It could also be more of a grove, perhaps on a burial mound, or a part of the forest that was considered particularly inhabited by spirits or trolls. And remarkably, people seem to have very much remembered places where there used to be forest, but where there wasn't forest anymore. Almost as if people kind of were thinking well, that place was actually supposed to remain forest, right? And uh, there's a lot of, of records of people remembering all the places that used to be forest. On farms, there used to be a sacred tree that was sacred to that farm. And this is a, a tradition which is particularly found in, in Norway, but also a bit in other parts of Scandinavia. Uh, a farm tree could typically be close to a grave mount, and there would be rather strict taboos surrounding such trees. Uh, of course, you can't cut it or anything like that, but even branches that break off during a storm or something like that cannot be burned. Leaves and branches from that tree would be collected and put close to the trunk to such an extent that it would form a, a little mount, mount in there. You can't even touch the grass below such a tree, right? People would give it buttermilk, pour it at the roots. The wart from brewing uh, could be given to the tree and some of the first milk drips of, a, of the cow could be given to the Tusse Birk a Thurs birch or a troll tree. Many farmsteads in Norway have all their own little traditions of giving a bowl of beer or some bread on Christmas Eve, you know, for the spirit of the farm's sacred tree. They would say stuff like, O Vete, the spirit of God, I want you to have this, my sister, or this is for my uncle, he was a worthy warrior. Notice that there's a relation, an idea of kinship, which is used uh, when addressing these trees. And trees could also be associated with grave mounds and the dead or with persons. Uh, and I'll, I'll come back to that. Cutting down such a tree could result in dire punishment. You know, on a farm in Telemark, a grove of birch trees was on a grave mound and that was a spirit place. And people always remember to give these spirits offerings on holidays, you know, and uh, bring them offerings. But when these birch trees were cut down, then everything collapses and people die and livestock die and uh, everything just goes to shit. In many cases, it is the patron spirit of a farmstead that lives inside a tree. But when people come to you know, become devout Christ Christians, then this becomes a problem. There's a man who goes out and shoots this demonic tree with the silver button. And then, of course, everything goes to shit on the farm place. In southern Scandinavia, there, there uh, was a, a 
strong focus on the elder tree, hyll or hyllemor, mother elder, perhaps related to Holda, um, a goddess figure particularly associated with healing. And there was a strong focus on reciprocity. Hildi mother, Hildi mother, let me take some of your Hild, your elder, and I will let you take something of mine, and then you would give it something, like a coin or something like that. Um, the, 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 and a bit like the fate of a farm could be tied to a particular tree, a patron spirit of the, of the farm, this could also be the case of the face of fate of a person. People would always, all often plant a tree for a newborn child, and it seems that such trees can perhaps become trees of a farm or of an ancestor, something like that. You know? um, but I'm going to share with you a little bit of a, uh, um, a view of these person-connected person trees here from a book about a redeemed Congolese sorcerer called Mukendi that uh, became a born-again Christian. And this is the end of the book, how Mukendi's story ends. I picked it up in Uganda when I lived there. <clears throat> Mukendi sought his mother's consent to cut down the tree which was supposed to hold his life. The time had come for Mukendi to destroy it. He had to choose between the devil he had served and, and mistrusted and God who was new to him but loving and caring. Mother, what about the tree that you told me that I would die if anything happened to it? I'm going to cut it down and you will witness Jesus' protection, he said. My son, said the mother, you can touch anything else but that, not this son. The grandmother who had planted that tree had died. Mukendi was not around when she died and the demons in her were crying out for Mukendi as he was their rightful heir to her powers. But because he was not around, she died crying sadly. If Mukendi was here, those demons would have ended him straight, uh, straight away to re reinforce his powers. Uh, note how Mukendi has been uprooted and the spirit relations of his kinship line, they are they're ruptured as his grandmother, she dies crying about uh, the loss of their uh, tradition here. With praises before the Lord, the brethren marched with their machetes towards that dreadful spot at the foot of the big tree. Puzzled, Mukendi's mother and neighbors watched in awe, fear, and amazement. Um, when the tree was cut down, Mukendi's mother started gaining confidence. Just before the tree fell, many people from the neighborhood streamed into the compound. Reason? They had heard such a sweet choir singing Christian songs of praise. They said that they expected to meet some evangelist with loudspeakers singing in a meeting, uh, but according to Mukendi, nobody sung. Angels must have sung as God rejoiced over us with song every time we struck the tree with the machetes they rejoiced. Those that turned up in the compound also gave their lives to Jesus. One can imagine what a deliverance God brought to his people uh, on that day through Mukendi's obedience. Now, the tree is a universal connector. It is somehow a centerpiece in this living and interconnected world that is so full of beings of all sorts. And that is why people address trees as relation, sister, uncle, mother. It's why it's connected to Mukendi's kinship line. And it's also why people who have an interest in disrupting connectedness, they attack the tree. And there's a weird directness in the fact that, it, that there's a lack of forest that is directly hurting the world. The breath of trees, the, they inhale CO2 and they exhale oxygen. We inhale oxygen and exhale CO2, not only from our civilization, but also from our bodies. So the destruction of trees is this extremely direct way of destroying the balance, something that we are breathing with, you know. Mukendi in Congo, Reinhardt in Nigeria, Charlemagne in bon Boniface, you know, and in Germany, they are in a global way, uh, way cutting down the barn stock, 
the, the life tree. Mukendi doesn't physically die in that moment when his life tree falls, but something surely died on that day in Congo where they cut down the Sunga tree of a family uh, tradition with their machetes while angels were singing songs of praise, right? While I've been speaking here in this video, about 40 trees have been cut down. On a yearly basis, this amounts to an area of forest destroyed roughly the size of Belgium. In the last century, half of the forest on this planet has been obliterated, a process which causes mass extinction of species, desertification, displacement of population, global warming, so warming, soil erosion, and degradation of land. Yeah, so there's that. But don't tell me that the fundamental attitude that hears celestial choirs of angels rejoicing as the machetes strike down Mukendi's family uh, tree, that that attitude has not contributed uh, to make this apocalyptic omnicide meaningful for people. That we are proceeding in this way as human civilization. Now, our Sunga trees and Donna's oaks and Emin souls and elder trees and ash trees, many of them have been cut down. But the record of tree worship also shows us that this is such a natural and evident and dynamic thing that, you know, well, we must just start again. Start planting trees, you know, planting trees for our children. Stop deforesting. The tree of life is burning, right? And we have to come to the realization that it is our life tree and we will die when it falls, right? Right, and if you want to explore this theme a little bit more, tree and, and tree symbolism, then I actually have a little playlist here on my channel that's focused on that, um, on the tree as a symbol in, in Nordic animism. And I also recommend the writing of my friend Joseph Hopkins on sacred groves and trees on his incredibly informative page, um, uh, mimisbrunner.info. Right? And uh, see you around. My name is Rune Jane Rasmus. The work that I'm sharing with you on this channel focuses on recovering Euro traditional animist knowledge. This is the fruit of a life of study and research all over the world and I hold a doctorate from the oldest university in the Nordic region but I'm choosing to popularize rather than to focus on academic publication. Conventional institutions however have yet to warm up properly to my perspective so if you appreciate what I do then please do consider that I also need to feed my family. Uh, for the price of less than one beer per month you can become a patron supporter or you can head over to my web shop and enter into exchange relation with me. You can also give single donations to my PayPal account or if you have contact with someone that might help me project this incredibly important perspective to the world then do drop me a PM and uh, remember also to clickety click and subscribe, follow, share, comment and all that. Thank you very much. Ben. Oh,